Yeah, I think, I think the thing that's wonderful about taking a building like this and being able to turn it over to the arts is that you're creating these different environment and experiences for people. The work that we are doing here tends to be experiential. I mean, you as the audience member enter into the work. And I find that really thrilling. I mean, I think we all love those kind of works which we get right inside. We did the Merce Cunningham Memorial here, which was the most beautiful thing because the dancers danced for almost five continuous hours and the audience moved in and about the stages, actually talking to each other. It, it, it wasn't impolite, it, it wasn't out of lack of interest, it was quite the opposite. It was that they were sharing their own experiences about Merce, about how dance affected their lives, and it was it just one of those magical things. Well, you know, it, it's rather ironic because we, we looked at the recapture of the armory much like a military campaign, right. <laughs> uh, which is, of course, its history. The, the building was built by the 7th Regiment, which was the elite regiment of uh, volunteer militia. So it was the richest young man of New York who really ran the city and ran the economy of the Northeast and the States. And they had all these extraordinary designers who worked with them and were building their mansions in Newport and on Fifth Avenue. They made two terrific decisions. The first one was that their drill hall wouldn't be a Quonset hut, but would be designed after the great uh, European train stations. So this is indeed what it looks like. It has just this beautiful structure that's so gorgeous and, and really done something so different. And it's 55,000 square feet. It was the largest open space built in New York at the time and still is one of the largest spaces in New York. And then they had these rooms that we're sitting in. We're sitting in a room by Stanford, White, Lewis, Comfort, Tiffany. They had these designers who were in their 20s and had never had major commissions design these beautiful rooms. And they're extraordinary. So that they had such taste and foresight was a wonderful thing. They loved culture. Uh, they had main music festivals where they'd have 6,000 people in the audience. But what I find more remarkable is they had 2,000 people on stage, you know, 1,200 in the orchestra, 800 in the chorus. I can't even imagine how you do that. So for reasons I don't really understand, this building uh, was allowed to deteriorate. Water was coming through the roof and the beautiful interior paint was being corroded and the structure was falling apart. But it took us years to convince the state of New York that they should give us this building um, so that we could rehab it, restore it to its previous splendor, but most importantly, turn it to culture because it just seems so right. You know, these large scale rooms are so beautiful for dance and sound pieces, chamber music. And then the drill hall is I think for artists, for artists who are doing a particular kind of work, e either in visual or performing arts, this is so different from the traditional concert hall or proscenium theater or museum space. It's really dream large, think differently, uh, and artists seem to be responding to it extraordinarily well. Our first artistic uh, production was done with Art Production Fund and it was a motorcycle painting by the artist Aaron Young that was just fantastic. And it was really, it just really gave you the sense of what this drill hall could be. But it also made us think that we need to set up our own commissioning program because there are so many artists that could work in this space. Uh, and so our first commission was uh, in uh, 2009 and was Ernesto Neto a Brazilian artist who works in gauze and spices and created this labyrinth, this really beautiful, very multi-sensory playground. It was gorgeous. With Christian, this is a very important artist um, who's exploring very difficult issues and wanted to explore them at scale. I mean, he had done, he's done many exhibitions that have been much smaller than this. But it was sort of essential to the next step of his work that he look at something that worked at a scale that was much larger than what he'd done before. And he was doing a piece at the Grand Palais with whom we have a relationship. It just seemed perfect for us. So I think that making those relationships with organizations around the world that have these unusual spaces is also going to feed us. Because we're young, and we are very young, there are certainly things that are more difficult, but we're kind of the culture of yes. And our view is you come in, if it has merit, if it fits with only at the armory, because that's very important for us. If you can go to a proscenium theater, 
don't come here. If you want the if if you want Carnegie Hall acoustics, don't come here. Uh, but if you want to do something that's kind of off the beaten track and needs a great big space or a beautiful sort of ruined palace space like the space we're sitting in now, we are the place for you. So that's really our mission: is to give artists the opportunity to work in these very non-traditional spaces.